Hello, I'm Dr. Dale Caldwell. Welcome to Family Business World. I have a good friend and uh, an extraordinary CEO. Gene Waddy is best known as CEO of Diversin and now has another company which we'll hear about, which is uh, Alpha. Uh, Gene, welcome and uh, thanks for taking time today. Thank you, uh, Dale. It's uh, good to see you. Uh, a little bit different circumstances than, than usual, but Good to see you nonetheless. Yeah, it's, it's good to see you, your face. I know we've talked some and, um, you know, with this whole uh, um, COVID. Now, tell me about your, your two businesses. Um, and so you are, um, I mean, really record-breaking uh, with Diversin. And I know with Alpha, you're starting to do some great things. So tell me about the businesses. How do they get started and what's going on? Great, great. So, uh, yeah, so Diversin uh, is our IT staffing uh, company mm -hmm. and uh, co-founded that in 2005. Now with my partner John, uh, we grew that business just about two hundred million dollars as of uh, last year's uh, numbers. Nice. Uh, since life wasn't complicated enough, I had to spin off a second business, which is Alpha Business, which is a payroll company. Okay. And uh, that is running well, and we're adding clients even in the midst of COVID nineteen. Really? We're still wow. Adding wow. Accounts. So uh, it's been a great journey, 16 years huh? And uh, Dale, you know the story. It all started because I ended up getting downsized uh, from a, <laughs> a company, uh, shall we make nameless, now, 16 <laughs> years And uh, I started out of necessity and, and you know, well, so so that that's what we'll start there, and I want to want to hear more about your your. I know you're as you know I'm I'm a professor and executive director of the Fairleigh Dickinson University Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. You are one of the stellar alums of Fairleigh Dickinson University. We'll get to that, but I think it's important now, especially when people are dealing with downsizing. They're dealing with their businesses stopped. You know, you're in a crisis. You're stressed. What do you do? You're a family business. You're an individual. Uh, you got out of it and created something extraordinary. What, what advice do you have for those people that are, that are where you were when you were downsized? Well, I would say is don't panic uh, because you can't make good logical decisions, whether personally or professionally, when you're in panic mode. Right. That, that's the first thing. Um, the second uh, piece of advice I would give is to look at change, mm -hmm. disruption, as an opportunity. Mm. When things change, oftentimes opportunities come in its wake. Right. So I think it's whether they're family businesses, you know, startups, large businesses, go on mm. Go on often because the majority of editors might be in panic mode, they may be thing, they may be going in defensive posture. Right. I look at this as an opportunity to go on. Right. Put your foot on the gas, get more business, and continue to grow through this turmoil. Mm -hmm. That that is really uh, that's powerful, powerful advice. And and I know I had created and wrote a couple articles about what I call a self reflection map, where people really need to. And you have a panic zone, and then kind of awareness of your panic, and then success zone. And we've got to do that check in of ourselves and family. Because an example I, I give and, and, and you model it is, is, you know, on the airplane, when they say put on the, the gas mask if the air goes down, put it on yourself first and then everybody else. Well, you're a business owner. You've got to be able to breathe before you can save your, your, your business. So um, let's hear a little more about Gene. So you, 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 went, you went to Fairleigh Dickinson University. What did you, what did you major in? So I was an engineer, believe it or not, and uh, mechanical engineer and then uh, Tina Cactus. Campus, which is now called the Metro Campus. Metro. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so all engineer, and uh, I suffered through four or five years, and uh, here I am. The uh, um, well, and again, now, now how has that? Uh, because I teach family business management at, at Fairleigh Dickinson, so was a number of my students watch. So um, you know, what's the core? You know. And especially now, because young people are, are trying to figure out what's going on in the fall. You know, it's been, we've been online, we've been doing Zoom classes. So what what's are some of the biggest lessons you learn? And what's the biggest value of college to your success today? Well, college, I, I learned so much. It, 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 it,
part of it was due to the rigor of the engineering. And what that taught me was tenacity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tenacity. All the Never giving up, uh, no matter how difficult the problem was to solve, you don't give up. Right. That was the, the, the first piece, you don't give up. The second takeaway on the college was the engineering program taught me how to take large, large problems mm -hmm. and break them down into more manageable pieces. Right. I do that today in business and in life. Mm. Um, and if you take it outside the room, uh, I learned during my college years, I learned to build networks mm -hmm. and build relationships with people, not always like right. that they come from a different background, different socio political, if they could be from somewhere halfway in the world. I look at all of my relationships as a culmination of that learning, mm -hmm. you know, from the time I was on campus to mm -hmm. So that top experience uh, is all about classroom, but you also learn a lot outside the classroom. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. The, uh, well, see, that, that's, that, again, uh, that's great insight. I know when I, do, I give a lot of leadership training lectures, and one of the assignments that I give folks is, is find somebody who you don't know or don't like and spend some time with them and, and understand who they are. And I will guarantee if you do it enough, you will learn more from them than you will hanging with people who are just like you. And so that's, that's, it's great to hear you, you say that. Because then you get a sense of other folks, and I call it empathy. I think empathy is the number one business skill where you kind of understand your coworkers, you understand your customers, and and you know, and, and other things. So, um, so you you uh, at Fairleigh Dickinson engineer, um, you now have uh, this business. Um, what are you doing during this crisis? This is this is something we've never seen before. How are you handling it? How are you surviving? And uh, what are some of the strategies that you're using? Well, it's, it's very interesting, and I have to say, Dale, I've never been busier. Mm. Uh, my payroll business is right now, uh, many of my new clients are in the education or education technology mm. because of the prevalence now of virtual learning for classrooms, which you spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. There is a whole technology uh, infrastructure that one has to have if you're going to do virtual rooms effectively. Yeah. So that is driving the, uh, right now in, in my business. Uh, and we are taking full advantage of it. So what I do um, every day is I tell myself today, today something fantastic is going to happen because we're surrounded by the doom and the gloom. Right. And, and so And look at the window eyes. The sun is still coming up. Right. right? The world. And you stay positive. You, you've got to Every be positive. Day. And I'm surviving because I'm staying focused on the big. Right. I have to do every day, every moment. Right. Whether it's personal, my family, my kids. Mother in law's with us, the dogs are running around. <laughs> but then I go, you know, this is my sanctuary, I call it. And I work on the that I can control. Right. You feel much, much better, uh, less stressed. Um, I feel like I can control what I'm doing. Right. 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 I can't control what COVID the, 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 the Virus is going to do what it does. Right. So when it, I can't control it. I can't make mm -hmm. But what I can't is how many phone calls I get to right. my clients. Right. How many did I have with my team? Mm -hmm. How much time do I spend stressing? And tell I have to tell you, my wife is like laughing at me. She just seems so happy. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I'm living the best life because I have time to think. Yeah. For 16 years, I've been in the business and chasing every 
opportunity. Right. I had the past two months of my life, I had the ability and time to think and truly strategize. So when I do work, I do up, it's five o'clock. I said, honey, I'm, I'm scheming, I'm scheming, I'm planning, I'm thinking. <laughs> and uh, it's already starting to pay off. Wonderful. Uh, that's keeping me grounded. Yep. So the, uh, see that that's that's important that this this is such an opportunity. I mean, again, for us, we now have these family business Friday uh, Zoom calls, and um, you know we're we're national now. We we couldn't be national. We have people from I have someone from Georgia, Atlanta speaking in a few weeks, and Florida, and so um, you know we've turned lemon into lemonade, and so uh, and that and that opportunity which you're doing other is that. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll come back. Um, talking to Gene Wadi, uh, CEO of Diversant uh, and Alpha Business Solutions. On Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. right here on RVN TV. Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Jacqueline. Take charge of your life personally, financially, and professionally. Visit drjacqueline.com to book an appointment today. with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAT partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP Partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level. I'm Dr. Dale Caldwell, host of Family Business World with Gene Waddy, who's going to tell us some more about his uh, businesses. Gene, you've given some great advice on how to get through the pandemic and trials, but I know um, with Diversant, you, you really have a global reputation. Diversant is the, the biggest of its kind. Can you describe what do you, what do you actually do with staffing? What does staffing mean to the layman? Well, so basically, well, Diversant is an I staffing firm. We also focus on other areas of, of uh, temporary labor as well. Um, basically, you know, not, uh, when clients have a need, we'll say it's a project, uh, maybe they're rolling out something, they may want to bring in temporary resources mm -hmm. at, on an hourly rate that they can use, they can staff up mm -hmm. and do their work, do their projects, uh, and then when they are done with their, their, their initiative, those resources can be moved on to opportunities, either with the same company or with the new company. So it's contingent is, is what diversity is all about. And we work with companies who are 
usually on the larger, large enterprise, what we call enterprise accounts, uh, large Fortune 500 and above companies, mm -hmm. and uh, firms that often have a uh, supplier diversity program, because diversity is a certified minority owned business, right. as well as our uh, yeah, both of them are already owned. Right. Uh, so that's what we do. I grew up in the business, and I'm still at it. The, uh, well, and, and, well, one of the things, and I, I, um, I was, uh, I'd mentioned a couple of shows, I have an article <coughs> about um, what I call a public spend program. And I've been advocating for the last two years, I was in the, the governor's budget transition committee, to say that, you know, why don't we have every public agency, I'm on the Vice President of the New Brunswick Board of Education, report how much they spend with certified veteran-owned businesses, certified women-owned businesses, certified minority-owned businesses. And in the example I, I use is that there are $2 billion spent by Jersey City, Newark, and Camden. 5% of that would be $150 million that could be spent in these businesses, like yours, with staffing and busing and so on. So hopefully they'll take that up, because you know, government's running out of money for stimulus. We've got to force people to buy in New Jersey. And so you have, have done that. Now, as, as uh, Diversant, the largest minority-owned staffing company in the world? Or one of the largest African-American-owned. African-American-owned, OK. IT staffing company, yes. Uh, and the fact that we focus uh, only on differentiates us. They're larger firm. But we're not your own. Right. Yeah, but they do other things. Right. You know, right. One, uh, I think the advantages that the person has is that we focus strongly on the IT space uh, as opposed to trying to be all things. So, right. Uh, that to get all the wood behind it. So, uh, I really uh, hit the target for the client. And, um, you know, so that's the that side of my life. And then the payroll side, mm -hmm. with patients, that business grew up mm -hmm. um, as an adjunct to diverse staff. So payroll was a cousin, mm -hmm. cousin to right. staff. Okay. Okay. So I think clients send you a requirement or out you recruit candidates for that requirement. The client likes them. Mm -hmm. They're in the client's environment. They start work. We pay them. Payroll is expected, except we don't recruit. Right. The client has already identified those resources, and they are on my payroll. So we pay them, administer the benefits, we take care of all the taxes. Employer of right. If you other way, when people say payroll, employer record is actually a more descriptive uh, term, and that business is growing uh, left and right. So. Not bad for uh, three years' worth of work. Got some pretty nice clients uh, coming in the door. And um, um, what, tell me about about what size companies do you work with with the the, the payroll? I mean, uh, what's the, what's the minimum size you typically like to work with? Great question. So we actually have a wide range of clients. We can do twenty five headcount, twenty headcount. We can do. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a range. And what's wonderful about Alpha is that we already have a mature back office. Mm -hmm. right? So we use the same back office right. that I built for diversity. Mm -hmm. So the same HRs, the same accounting, same banking relationships mm -hmm. have a very healthy credit facility for both businesses, mm -hmm. which allows us to grow. Uh, and so uh, that is what allows us to bid on opportunity. I'm bidding on one right now that uh, 500 uh, resources is actually based out of Canada. Wow. Uh, that has this opportunity. Uh, I have a few others that are well over a thousand wow. that we're bidding on. And I feel very strongly we're going to win one. We need to. So this time, and, and I can see why it may be, be good for business, is that so many, especially with the PPP, um, yes. The protection plan that you you need to know your payroll, and what I'm hearing mm -hmm. is a lot of businesses have no idea what the real payroll is, and and you know well, they need <laughs> somebody to track it, and so they you know we don't know what to do. How can we do this? How can we get get a, a forgiveness instead of a you know instead of a loan? And so you're dealing with those kinds of issues. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We, um, we were very successful uh, with the PPP uh, uh-huh. program. Uh, we um, see the benefit of having strong office and very strong best practices is that when someone requires your financials, payroll information, that's, we can get that information to them in minutes. Right, instantaneously. <laughs> Just like that, because we've got professionals, our document top notch, yep. and our financing, you know, is is very straightforward, as well as our payroll. Mm-hmm. So the PPP about having solid information and getting it where it needed to go, mm-hmm. because it's a very small window. But the first, the first tranche on that was going to date. Right. Right. So we didn't make the first. We got the second, mm-hmm. second batch, and uh, we did we did uh, like oh, um, I mentor several minority-owned businesses, okay. and a lot of the challenge that I saw with the PPP, people, <laughs> many of these businesses are small, right, right, mom and pop, so to gather months of payroll data for some of them because those systems were going to be automated. Mm-hmm. So they were paying their resources in a myriad of different ways. Right. Projects, cash, you know, all sorts of different things. Someone said, 12 months of payroll. For me, that's just good enough. Off uh, they go and they're, they're in. Right. We'll try, try to reconstitute <laughs> a year's worth of, uh, of, of, of payroll. So that was the first issue. Right. The second issue was a lack of relationships with the banking community. Right, right. So you had several folks in the minority community rely on active and you know, companies of that nature that are not FDA lenders, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? The other piece is that the bigger your people, the more interested the banks right. were becoming in giving. So, again, it's small, necessarily having that level of right. to be able to respond quickly, uh, hurt a lot of, of our minority business owners, and uh, left a lot of us, unfortunately, on the sidelines. Right. Um, right. But we, we were successful. Several other of uh, my, uh, my compatriots in the minority entrepreneur community mm-hmm. get the funding. I sent them different. Uh, like the, uh, the, uh, the enterprise centers in New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, okay. I got people connected. So uh, there were some that didn't make it the first time, mm-hmm. got it second. So, uh, so it's a very interesting program. It's working well for us. Um, yeah. We're going for 100% get, get there. Uh, but there are rules. And again, we're having a good financial uh, department or an accountant involved can increase that. We'll get it. We will forget it. Uh, but it's a fantastic opportunity, Dale. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. Uh, R- really? You can get the math easy. Right. A million dollars. Yep. 1% interest, mm-hmm. six months with no payment. Right. And if you spend 75% of it on payroll or other approved expenses, right. that, listen, we pay enough money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to the government exactly. taxes. Exactly. This was our chance to get some of it back. Exactly. And also, in all seriousness, to do the right thing, right? Right. To keep our payrolls whole, keep our keep our economy moving forward. So I think it's been it hasn't been without hiccups. Yeah. But I for one feel like it's going to be the silver the silver right fun yeah. of this pandemic from a business perspective. Well, it's, 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 it's really proven that, you know, for the first time, people realize this is a small family, independent business economy. This is where the jobs are. And that government, you know, that government and America is a small business economy. And hopefully we'll continue to see some changes. So we are, you know, really nearing the, the end of time. You know, these sessions always go by so, uh, so quickly. Um, but uh, Gene Waddy, um, I, I want to thank you so so very much. You are a, a real role model, 
you are thank doing you. amazing things. And so, uh, so thank you for being on Family Business World. Well, thank you. It's always a pleasure. And our time is always so short because we, we really enjoy talking to one another. But listen, if you ever need me to come back on, just give me a holler. Absolutely. Take care. Take care. Have a, have a great day. We thank you all for watching another episode.